Welcome to Your Academic Success in 5. I'm Matt Lorenzen, the Academic Success Guru, and this is a video on how to overcome test anxiety. So, you feel nervous, you feel fear, dread, you might feel irritable, hopeless, confused, butterflies in the stomach, sweaty palms, you have trouble concentrating, and you have trouble remembering the information that you studied. These are the symptoms of test anxiety. Now, I've coached hundreds of students effectively to uh, help them overcome uh, test anxiety. And uh, what we found is that there are generally four main causes to test anxiety. So let's take a look at them and some effective solutions to address each cause. Number one, poor study habits. Um, to learn more about effective study habits, I've done another Your Academic Success in Five video called Memory and Study Skills where I review the secrets to smart studying, how to make um, information stick in your mind and where you end up having to study less. Number two are poor health habits, and I would define these as poor sleep, unhealthy diet, abuse of caffeine, sugar, stimulants, poor stress management, and little or no exercise. Um, the solutions would be for uh, poor sleep, is seven to eight hours of continuous sleep um, is very helpful. A healthy diet, eating uh, breakfast with lots of protein, um, decrease caffeine and sugars, eliminate stimulants, um, practice healthy stress management techniques to make sure that your stress level and the other stressors that are going on in your life are not impacting you. And to exercise regularly, doing a lot of cardio is really helpful to decrease anxiety. The third cause of test anxiety I would define as poor body relaxation strategies. Um, the fact of the matter is when your body is relaxed, um, it's much easier for you to be relaxed. And so some effective ways to um, practice these body relaxation strategies are to focus on doing some deep breathing, um, doing such things as like mindfulness meditation or progressive muscle relaxation. Now, by far the most common cause of uh, test anxiety are cognitions or self-talk. And this is what you say to yourself that increases your anxiety. Um, the fact of the matter is, whether you believe something to be true or not, you are correct. Your thoughts in many ways determine your outcomes. And if you want different outcomes in your life, you need to change your thoughts. So let's take a look at some common beliefs that test anxiety students have, and I'll show you how to change those thoughts so that you can be less test anxious and have better outcomes. So you've got a test in two weeks. You might be saying to yourself, I must get an A or it'll be awful. Or if I don't will do well on a test, it means that I'm a failure. I'm not college material. You engage in self-talk about how you'll perform on the test the outcome's importance or meaning to you, and how you'll react if you fail. Now, this type of self-talk puts a lot of pressure on you and leads to a lot of anxiety. Imagine for a moment walking on train tracks. Pretty easy, right? What if you were to push those train tracks a thousand feet up in the air? Your knees would wobble. You would not be able to walk as far as you would had those tracks been on the ground. Well, this is kind of like test anxiety. You're mentally and needlessly pushing the tracks up in the air a thousand feet. So let's take a look at ways that you can really bring the tracks down to the ground. So how do you bring the tracks down to the ground? It's a simple four-step process. So let's take a look at this four-step process so that you can change your stinking thinking and negative self-talk and get better outcomes on your tests and be less test anxious. Um, so number one, what you need to do is identify the beliefs that lead to anxiety. What are you telling yourself that ramps up that pressure on you? What are you telling yourself that leads to anxiety? Number two, what you want to do is ask, is this a rational or irrational belief? And take action on the rational beliefs. Saying I'm anxious because I'm not well prepared, and if you really are not well prepared, is hopefully uh, something that's going to help propel you to, um, once you recognize it, to um, use that motivation and that energy of anxiety to um, be more prepared and be more motivated to study better. Um, but what if you have irrational beliefs that lead you to be overly anxious? Um, for example, what if you say, I must get an A or it will be awful. Or if I don't do well um, on the next exam, it means that I'm a failure or I'm not college material. Can you change your thoughts with affirmations alone, like many people say? I don't believe so, no. It's like putting a Band-Aid on a gaping wound. 
What you need to do instead is to examine and logically dispute that stinking thinking and negative self-talk, those irrational beliefs that are ramping up that test anxiety needlessly, pushing those train tracks up in the air a thousand feet. If you can do this, you can lessen the, the um, influence that these thoughts have on you and thus lessen your test anxiety. So here are some ways to examine and logically dispute your irrational beliefs. Number one, face your fears. You can do this by asking, what's the worst possible thing that can happen and can I deal with that? When we face our worst fears in our mind and, we, and in our mind we can cope with the outcomes, tackling the challenge really becomes that much easier. Secondly, be realistic. Ask, will that outcome really occur? Many of our fears um, don't really occur. And so what we can do is be realistic with a lot of those fears and again, bring that anxiety down. Number three, face your awfulism. Is it really that awful if you fail on an exam? A lot of times we really just haven't fully examined this question. And once we do, we realize, hey, we can face the outcomes that you are tougher than you realize you are. Next, I wanna take a look at how you can not personalize your grades and lessen attachments to outcomes. When you say you must earn an A or it'll be awful or failing means that you're not college material, you're either overly attached to your outcomes or you're overly personalizing your grades or both. Now it's normal to want to achieve your goals by saying, you want to have a certain grade, but by saying it's you have to have that grade or it's the end of the world, you're really decreasing your odds of actually getting that outcome. You have the right desires, but you're going about it the wrong way by pushing the tracks needlessly up in the sky. So how do you not personalize your goals? Number one, see your exams as learning experiences. Even if you've failed in the past, do your best to not view your grades as your F grades as yet another personal failure, but view them as feedback that you can use as a learning experience that will enable you to improve the next time. You can also embrace the growth mindset. These challenges, if you face them and solve them, will make you a stronger, smarter, and more resilient person in the future. So that's what you can kind of embrace and remind yourself when um, you're feeling really anxious about the outcomes of grades. Now how to attach, or how to lessen your attachment to the outcomes. What you wanna do is, you know, be in more in the moment and not focus on that end grade, right? So what you can do is change your language. Instead of saying, I must have that outcome, you might say, I prefer, or I would like to have that outcome. You can also question the healthiness of the thought and whether it will increase the odds of that positive outcome. Remember, the goal for test time is to be immersed in the moment and totally focused on the exam and the questions, not the outcome that you achieve after this exam. And you can do this by examining and disputing your negative self-talk. And then go to replacing the negative self-talk with positive reframes, affirmations, and go ahead and visualize outcomes, which is number four in the process of this simple step process, uh, four step process in changing your negative self-talk into more positive self-talk. So again, identifying, asking if it's rational, taking action on the rational ones, on the irrational ones, just examining and disputing them and reframing them, right? That you can deal with them. Now it's time to take a deep breath and replace the negative beliefs with a positive belief such as, I will do my best, or I studied well, I got this, right? Or positive reframes like growth mindset, that these learning experiences will make me stronger, so suck it up, I can do this. Great, now you've got some awesome positive affirmations. Now close your eyes, take some deep breaths, and visualize positive outcomes. Visualize yourself doing well on the exam. When fear resurfaces as it will, take some deep breaths, relax your body, let go of the fear, and remind yourself that you are well prepared. The day of test time, eat a healthy breakfast with protein. Do a brief review of the study material about a half hour prior to the exam. Focus on doing some deep breathing and affirm affirmations, allowing your mind to let go of the negative self-talk and be in the moment. 
Be on campus early with plenty of time and do your best to be focused in the moment and have that game, men game time mentality. Throw all that negative self-talk out the window. It does you no good. Thank you for watching this video on how to overcome test anxiety. For more in-depth information on test taking or how to overcome test anxiety and other student success topics, check out my book, Your Academic Success, The Academic Success Guru's Secrets to School Success, now available on Amazon. Also for private personal development coaching on test anxiety or college admissions consulting and counseling, please check out my website, www.academicsuccessguru.com. I'm Matt Lorenzen, the Academic Success Guru, signing off.